What's up YouTube? How are you doing today? Chana D, your techno dad here, and in today's video we're going to be checking out the TCL R617. And we're going to get into it right after the jump. And I'm back. Now if you're new to the channel and you want to learn about 4K, home theater and audio products, and how to set them up properly, you should consider subscribing because I'm here to help. Don't forget to hit that bell so you get notified when I do a live Q&A and answer your questions or when the next video gets released. Well now that that housekeeping's out of the way, let's get into it. Alright people, it is about time. The TCL R6. In particular, the 55R617 is the model I'll be unboxing today. But, you know, it's going to be pretty similar to the 55R615 from Best Buy. Now the boxes are different. I know the people that went to Best Buy and got theirs have a full color box. The one from Amazon is straight up just brown. Just brown box with like, you know, black writing on the front. You'll see that in the video in just a second. But pretty much these panels are the same. One is a Best Buy exclusive, one is an Amazon exclusive. And the difference is the voice remote that comes with the Amazon one. Now you could just go get the Best Buy one and then you know, pay like less than $50 and get the voice remote if that's an issue for you. But bottom line, picture wise, panel wise, these things are identical. So enough talk, let's get upstairs and unbox this thing. Oh yeah. All right, first things first in the box is the feet. And if you put them on the proper way, it's gonna take up a lot of space. Now, if you invert the feet and put them on that way, you can actually put this TV on a smaller TV stand or dresser or whatever it is you guys are gonna put it on. Next up, we got the power cable. We've got a remote with batteries. Now, this remote is flat black and it's a little bit thinner than last year's remote. Everything's pretty much the same. You've got your dedicated streaming service buttons at the bottom and navigation up top. And of course, the volume up and down and mute are on the right hand side of the remote. Next we've got a breakout cable and this is for all of your legacy equipment, anything that has a red, white, and yellow. And we also get a quick start guide. Now on the back of the TV on the left hand side, we have the one and only port and that's for power. On the back of the right hand side of the TV, we've got our inputs. From top to bottom, we have Ethernet, HDMI 1 and 2, a reset button, old school antenna input, digital audio output, HDMI 3, which is the only ARC port, a USB port, the AV in port, and this is what you use with that breakout cable you saw just a second ago, and a headphone output. That's basically it for the unboxing. Let's jump over to a little initial setup. So first things first, you sign into Wi-Fi, and then the TV goes ahead and runs an update on its own. After the update is done, we need to sign into the Roku account. There's a cool little remote tutorial if you're new to the Roku OS. It's very simple to understand and it's very easy to use. All right guys, so let's walk you through a couple of quick settings that I know you're gonna wanna do and you're gonna wanna know about before you know we get this TV up and running. Especially since I have to set this up in the bedroom, the master bedroom, right now it's in a guest bedroom. And before I get into the master bedroom, I gotta make sure it is wife friendly. What does that mean? Usually it means if she presses power on the TV, guess what? She should see the TV on. So normally when you turn on the Roku TV, it goes to the home screen. She does not like that. So let's change that, shall we? From the home screen, we need to go to settings. System. Power and then power on. And now here we have the option to change when the TV turns on, where does it go? Does it go to the home screen? Does it go to HDMI one? Does it go to antenna? Does it go to the last input used? Which one does it go to? We're gonna select HDMI one as I usually put the DirecTV box 
on HDMI 1 up in the master bedroom. Another thing we're going to do is change the location of these tiles. First of all, I'm going to keep the HDMI 1, 2, and 3 there, but I'm going to get rid of the antenna and I'm going to get rid of the AV in. To do that, you just select one of the tiles. So we're going to press the star button on the remote control and it brings up a menu. And what we're going to do is we're going to move inputs. Okay, so I just moved the antenna and I moved the AV in out of the way, like down to the bottom of the list. And then what I did was I moved some of the apps. I downloaded some apps that I needed to download like HBO Go and that kind of thing and then organized everything. So the top three rows or nine tiles are the things we use a lot. Hulu, Netflix, HBO Go, YouTube, that sort of thing. Alright, so those are a couple things that I need to get set up before the TV enters the master bedroom so that when my wife turns on the TV, she sees TV there and when she presses the home button, all the apps that she likes to use are right there in front of her. Otherwise, I get like a phone call or a text message saying, hey, I can't use this TV. Where's this? Where's that? And that's kind of a pain and so I'm making sure all the T's are crossed, all the I's are dotted before this TV makes it upstairs to the master bedroom. All right, let's move on to HDR. So I did go ahead and test out three types of HDR on this TV and I can verify through HDMI that Dolby Vision and HDR10 and HLG work via the HDMI inputs. And via streaming apps on the TV itself, I did verify that Dolby Vision comes in on Netflix and Vudu and HLG comes in through the TV's YouTube app. All right, so let's get to the meat and potatoes. What does Technodad think of this new TCL55R617? Here's the thing. Just like last year, 4K content looks great. 4K gaming looks great on Xbox One X. 4K gaming looks great on PS4 Pro. 4K Blu-rays look great. 4K streaming looks great. What does not look great. And just like I said in my review of the P607 last year, non 4K content doesn't look so great. I have a feeling that's attributed to the internal upscaler not being that fantastic. And in this price range, something's got to give. I said this before in, you know, other videos, like you have all these features in, in a TV that's under $700, something's got to give. And I feel it's the internal upscaler. Here's a still from Oblivion 4K UHD off the Vudu app. This is streaming and this looks gorgeous, okay? Now if we back out into the Vudu menu, look at this menu. Look at all the pixelation that's happening around the letters and around the icons. Just, just look at it. Like you can tell, like it's pixelated. So I haven't watched any 1080i TV from DirecTV yet, but I will be getting to that. My first impressions, kind of similar to last year's model in the fact that 4K content looks great, non-4K content of what I've seen so far, not so great. So what is the solution to that? Well, if you're streaming from a different source, like an Xbox One X, everything out of that is gonna be in 4K, so you won't have that issue, even in the menus of Vudu and you know whatever else streaming, like Netflix. But, you know, that's kind of rough, especially if you're, you know, buying a $600 TV and then a $500 Xbox. It's, you know. Anyway, that's up to you. Uh, one good thing is when this TV displays black, it's pretty black. Like, it's pretty dark. It's nearly, nearly dark. I was recording uh, the stills and all this other stuff late night, uh, last night in the guest room, and it's just totally dark in there, and the TV when it's on a black screen, it is actually black. So all those you know, new dimming zones definitely help out with that situation. So at least that's got it going for it. Now you know, I just got the TV and you guys know how I do it. I do an unboxing and first impression and I wait like a month to do a full review. So with this TV, I'll probably wait two or three months like I did last year to give you guys a full review on the TV and how it looks. And along the way, I'm gonna be making a bunch of setup videos 
and show you guys how to set up uh, Atmos pass through. So if you have Voodoo and you have a lot of movies on Voodoo, you guys can do the double Dolby. You'll get Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos through the TV, which is awesome. Wish I had that on my OLED. I don't. Oh well. Now if you guys have any questions at all about this TV and what I should check or check out for you, definitely leave those down in the comments. And of course, check out the Amazon and Best Buy links down in the description. I'm pretty excited and I can't wait to get this TV up into the master bedroom and start using it on a daily basis. As you guys know, I have the Sony X900E, 55 inch up in the master bedroom. And my biggest thing about this TV, the Sony, is that I just don't like the, um, you know, OS. And I actually prefer the Roku OS in this TCL over the Android operating system in the Sony. So I can't wait to get it up there and I'll be sharing more videos with you guys. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. If you like to go ahead and smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D. I'm your techno dad. I'll see you next time.